Is he in there? Yeah, in there. He's not getting out. Oh. All right. What's up, guys? Uh, I'm over here at the county jail in the city. Uh, DJ Mushu's in there. It's not looking good. Uh, whatever. He's behind on child support. So let's just go through this. So again, the purpose of this lecture is we want to discuss the logistics for the course now, uh, you know, online rather than in person. Uh, so that way, on the first day of class next week, we can just jump into all the database stuff right away. All right. So let's, let's go through this. Uh, the reason again, why, why am I down here at the county jail? Well, because because of databases, right? And this is what this course is really all about. It's about re, you know, focusing on the, like, the most important things in your, in your life. And yeah, sometimes bad things happen. So for me, the, the two most important things in my life are my wife and my biological daughter. First, they're number one. And then after that, it's just databases. So that's really, you know, what you should be getting out of this course. The databases is all consuming. Everything in the world is a database problem. And you'll have, I think, a better appreciation for this kind of stuff. So again, we'll cover this uh, in class next week. All right. The another thing, important thing to point out for this lecture this semester, or this, this semester is uh, we're graciously sponsored by Single Store, um, and they're helping out with with course development. So Single Store is a in-memory column store distributed database system that supports just-in-time query compilation. Now, if none of that makes sense for you right now, that's that's fine because we'll cover all these things throughout the semester. And so we're grateful for them helping uh, helping us out, and they'll be coming giving a guest lecture at the uh, at, at, at the end, end, end of the semester. So more on that uh, as we go along. All right. So to our, today's lecture, real quickly, we're going to first obviously discuss the waitlist because that's what a lot of you guys care about. Then we'll talk about the rules we have uh, for the lectures, and then we'll go through all the course logistics, including homeworks and uh, projects. All right. So the first thing to obviously to deal with is the waitlist. Uh, as you're probably aware of, if you're a senior student, the wait list is quite long. Uh, and, you know, there's more people that can take, want to take the course than we can actually accommodate. So at this point, the, the CS department has taken over the wait list from, from us uh, because they, they need to make sure that certain students need to graduate and, you know, handle, you know take us to source collectives and all that, and they, they all get preference. So we, the professors have no control over the wait list. Uh, so if you send us emails, there's, there's not much, there's nothing we, we, we can do. Um, and the admins will then move students off the wait list, but they're not always going to go in the order that, uh, that you're, you're, you're ranked in the wait list. Um, cause there's multiple sections, there's, there's undergrads, there's master students. So, that, you know, just because you're some low number on the wait list, there's no guarantee that we can get you in this semester. Um, the good news is that since we've hired Jignesh Patel, uh, as the new data professor with me here at Carnegie Mellon, uh, we can now offer 15, 40, 40, 40, 45, and 645 every semester. Uh, so it will be offered again in, in spring 2024, in addition to this semester. All right, so the other thing, uh, when we have the in-class lectures, it's really important that uh, I want it to be interactive. We, we don't just, just you know, us stand up there for you know, an hour and prattle on about databases. Uh, it's always helpful, or it's always fun when students ask questions. Um, and these questions could be either because we're talking too fast uh, and he wants to slow down. I get excited when I talk about databases. So I, if I'm going too fast. Please tell me to shut up and slow down. Um, and certainly if you don't understand what we're talking about, it's a good time to interrupt to ask clarifying questions because maybe there's something about, you know, in the slides or, or the discussion that doesn't make sense. And oftentimes too, if you have questions, uh, other people have uh, probably have same questions as well. Um, so please, uh, anytime during the lectures, please interrupt us with anything that's database related. What we don't want to be interrupted about is whether or not you can go to the bathroom because you know, you're an adult. You don't have to ask permissions. Uh, we also don't want to be interrupted about blockchains. Blockchain for databases are stupid. Uh, we're not going to cover them. There's no need to cover them. I asked you some about this. Uh, we're, we're, again, we're, we're not covering these things. Um, so now, because I want you to interrupt us uh, while we're giving the lectures, that means that I, we don't want you to... Uh, come at the end of the end of the lecture and say, "Oh, you know, what about slide three? I did this didn't make sense and so forth, right?" Because in the past we've we've always finished the lectures and then there's you know several students lined up asking the same question over and over again. Um, and again, so this is what I'm saying: if you interrupt us as we're going along, you know, it'll help everyone at the same time. So please, we're not we're not we won't answer any questions about the slides immediately after class. All right. So, what is this course? So, 1545, 645 is a course about the design and implementation of, of the database management systems. 
Now, we're specifically we're going to discuss relational database management systems, uh, and we'll cover that in the, in the next lecture. But it's really about how you should have to build these systems. So this is in the, this is in the course about how to use one. This is, of course, how to build an application that, that uses an ORM to make calls to a database or whatever. And this is really how you build the internals of these systems. And the reason why this is, you, you want to focus on this topic is because no matter where you go in, in your life, in any aspect of computer science or even outside of computer science, there'll be times where you're, you're always going to be interacting with a database and therefore you need to know how these things are actually running. So even if you don't go off and go to single store and work on actually the internal of the data system, you need to know what's actually going on to help you understand uh, you know, why the system's behaving a certain way. Um, I actually had people email me and tell me that uh, a lot of the concepts of the databases are applicable to other things uh, like queuing systems and whatnot. So like, you know, the things we're covering this semester, I think, will be super useful throughout your entire career. So if you want to learn about how to use a database system or how to administrate it, administer a database system, like being a DBA, uh, there's a couple courses in Heinz College that you should probably take instead. Um, this is really about like you know, people don't want to get their hands dirty on the internals of these systems. All right, so the logistics of the course, everything will be on the course website. Uh, we'll, we'll be publishing that very soon. Um, the, all the discussions and announcements throughout the semester will be done through Piazza. Um, all the homeworks and projects will be submitted through Gradescope. Everything will be auto-graded. Um, and then the final grades will be posted on, on campus. And again, if you're enrolled in the course uh, uh, officially, you should, should have access to all these things right now. So if you're a non-CMU student, because I know a lot of people outside CMU like, like to watch lectures and, and do the project as well, we have a separate grade scope uh, uh, account set up for the course that will mirror what the official CMU one does. Um, and you can use this code to, to log in and, and get access to it. And this will allow you to submit your projects and get graded the same way uh, that the, the CMU students do. So again, if you're a non-CMU student, we ask you, since we're providing this, this you know, our, our materials for you uh, free of charge, please don't post your solutions on GitHub. Uh, please don't email myself, Jignesh, or the TAs for help, just because we have so many people we need help here at CMU, we can't help everyone. Um, there is a Discord channel that actually is not run by CMU, uh, somebody outside of it. Uh, has set this up um, that's sort of become the de facto uh, location for discussing you know, various aspects of the course. So I encourage you to, to sign up and check that out. And again, in, in exchange for uh, uh, helping us out with this, or you know, for us helping everyone with, with these, these materials, uh, I ask if you're, someone please finish my Wikipedia article. Uh, which I think it's been flagged because uh, you know, they, there was some stuff that, that was sort of true and not true. But anyway, if someone could fix that for me, that'd be great. All right, there's a textbook for the course, uh, Database Systems Concepts from Silverchats, Forth, and Shundershin. Um, it's not required, like there's no homeworks that are based on it, uh, but if you want supplemental reading beyond what we discuss uh, in the class, uh, there'll, there'll be a readings you, you can go and, and dive deeper into the various topics. Now, there are going to be some things that we discuss that the, the textbook doesn't cover, or I don't think it covers as well as they should. Uh, and that's why we'll provide lecture notes as PDF files that are available there. Um, you know, whether you need to buy this textbook or not, uh, it's up to you. It depends on how, you know, how deep you really want to go into this, this material. All right, so the grading rubric for this semester uh, is going to be the following. So this is a project-heavy course. So the 45% of the grade uh, will be based on your projects. And I'll discuss what these are in a second. Um, the, the, there'll be five homework assignments, four projects, then a midterm exam and a final exam. You can see the breakdown here. All right, so all the homeworks will be based on the, the, the material we cover in, in, in class and in, in the assigned readings. Um, the first homework assignment will be a SQL assignment or a SQL project where you have to write some SQL queries uh, against a data set and see the correct answer. Um, everything after that, at least for homeworks, will be all pencil and paper, but you'll still submit those in Grayscope and, and be auto-graded there. Again, it's CMU, everyone knows this, all your homeworks should be done uh, individually and, and you shouldn't copy up each other. All the projects will be based on a system we've been building for several years now here, here at Carnegie Mellon called BusTub. Um, uh, we, we discuss in class what the name BusTub actually means, uh, or, or, or where it came from. Uh, but the idea here is that it's a, it's a, it's a te educational testbed database system where you will do all your projects on, and you'll see over time as you add more features to the database system, you'll get a better understanding how how the all the various layers fit together, and, and you can 
you know, run queries and actually see, see results based on like, the stuff that you actually built. So it's very important that you don't fall behind on the projects because every project is going to build on the previous one. Like in project one, you're going to build a buffer pool manager. But then in project two, you're going to build a, an index that, that gets pages or gets, gets memory from that buffer pool manager. So it's really important that you stay on track, start projects early, and, and don't fall behind. Plus Hub is written in C++, specifically, I think, what, C++ 20 now, uh, not 17. Um, we don't use all the advanced features in the new versions of C++, but the, yeah. the assumptions that you're coming into this class with the familiarity and, and being comfortable with writing and debugging C++. Um, and so I think it was a post on Piazza whether 213, 513 was, was, was enough for this. The answer is no. Uh, it's some of the things you, you'll be able to pick up uh, as you go along, but it's, it's a little, I think it's a little more advanced than, than 213. I'll cover late days, late days in a second, but there, there's, well, late days are only allowed for projects and homeworks, and you're given four late days that you can use for any project as, as we go along. And as we release each project, there'll be an online presentation that will hold where you can come and ask, you know, a week after the project's been released, after you've sort of looked at the code, you can come and ask questions about it uh, with the TAs and record that and make that available for everyone. So I've had to post it in the, in the email and I'll post it out again. There is a project zero that we require all students that want to take the class have to complete. And this is really a, a, a safety mechanism to make sure that again, you're coming to this class prepared to write C++ code. Uh, and so it's not graded in that it doesn't affect your final score in the class, but you're required to complete it because again, we don't want people who don't know C++ to think they're going to pick it up as they go along throughout the semester and then realize, oh, I have to know C++, learn C++ and learn Davis at the same time. It's, it's, it, it does not end well. Trust me, I've done, we've done this enough that we realize that this is really, this is really to help you uh, rather than, than make your life harder. So if you do not complete this, this Project Zero by the deadline of September 10th, um, we'll have, we're going to ask you to withdraw from this. And again, zero exceptions we made. I don't care that your brother took 513 10 years ago and you, and you saw what he did back then. Like, it doesn't matter. Uh, you have to complete this. It shouldn't take that much time, right? It's, it's, a, it's a pretty basic try. Uh, for office hours, uh, the, uh, myself, Jignesh, and the TAs will hold office hours uh, at various times throughout the week, but between Monday and Friday. And then there won't be any office hours regularly on Saturdays, but the day before the, every project is due, we'll have a, a sort of power session. We have multiple TAs for multiple hours available uh, for you to come and ask questions for. Um, but this means that there won't be any office hours on the Sunday uh, when projects are due because we don't want people to wait to the last minute to try, you know, to, to try to work on something and then, you know, hoping that the TAs will help them figure things out, right? Again, this is a forcing function to make sure that you are making progress, uh, you, know, soon, you know, start working on projects as soon as they're released. So you're not trying to do as much as you can at the last, last day. Because it's, again, this, it's systems programming is not easy. Um, and you will make mistakes, and you'll have to, you know, it takes time to sort of figure things out. Uh, for this semester, we're actually offering the course to, to CMUQ students. Uh, so welcome, thank you for joining us. Um, and I realize there's a time zone difference, and so we will have a, uh, a regularly scheduled office hour um, that lines up with your, you know, your working hours uh, with, a, with a different TA each week. And I'll, I'll announce this in Piazza when this will be. Um, and, you know, that, that way you at least talk to somebody if you, if you need to. And then if you need to talk to Jen Nash and myself, you know, we'll post how to schedule uh, calls with us at, at different times you know, as, as, as needed. Again, so this, this morning session or whenever, whenever it will be, will be for the senior students. We, we ask the, the regular, you know, the Pittsburgh senior students not to, to, not to use that. And by all means, please always if you have questions, post on Piazza right away because you you'll get an answer sooner uh, more quickly that way. All right, I guess I'll the late policy. Um, for homework, it's used 10 points every hour. It's, it's, it's late for every 24 hours late. And then the four late days that I'm talking about will be only be applicable to um, four, four projects. If there's a medical emergency, uh, if there's some kind of it's, it's, it's extreme circumstances, it's the term that the senior like to use. So medical emergency, family emergency. Um, if, if you need an extension, please email the instructors as soon as possible. Um, and that way we can make sure we make the appropriate accommodations. Um, if necessary, you may need to go through the, the, the medical thing, go, go through the, the, the health, health office, but, um, but email sooner rather than later. Like, can't be friends with us, but like, it's not good to be disappeared for 10, year, 10 weeks and then you come back and say, I need an extension. As soon as you know something's up, we're here to help. 
just let us know, okay? All right, I gotta say this every year. Uh, do not plagiarize. So all the homeworks, all the projects must be your own original work. These are not group assignments. You can discuss your projects with students, that's fine. Uh, you can even flesh out ideas on the whiteboard, but do not copy source code from other people. Do not copy source code from GitHub. Uh, so again, because we make this public to people outside CMU, there's a lot of implementations from previous semesters from, uh, that are available on GitHub. Uh, ChatGPT might be able to even do earlier projects. Um, do not copy them because we, the, we use Grayscope now, and Grayscope has a uh, plagiarizer checker. And basically what we do is we find all the GitHub implementations from non-CMU students, load them up into GitHub, sorry, into Grayscope as fake students, and then see whether you match against them. Uh, do, not, do not copy your source code from other students, do not copy your source code from GitHub. I would say also too, the GitHub source code is usually pretty crappy. We've done experiments before, Chi has done this. Uh, the CMU students crush the non-CMU students, so it's actually in your best interest not to copy them. Um, and again, there won't be any exceptions. Oh, I didn't know. Yeah, like the fact that this is recorded uh, on a lecture, if we have to report you to Warner Hall, we point to this, this timestamp in, in the lecture and say, where well, I'm warning you not to plagiarize. And then you plagiarize, yeah, and now you're screwed, right? Um, if there's something you want to do that seems kind of like gray zone and you, and you don't know if it's okay, like using ChatGPT or something like that, right? Uh, please, you know, email myself and Jignesh, not the TAs, to see whether, uh, you know, and see whether we want to discuss it. Um, and then the link there will be for CMU's policy or academic integrity. Again, we take this very seriously. Uh, don't f around. All right, one of the last thing is that if you love database as much as I do and you want to go beyond the course material, uh, we are offering a seminar series this semester. It's entirely optional, um, where every Monday starting in September, we're having a, a different outside speaker come give a talk about uh, you know, the various database you know, company or project. So this semester, the theme is machine learning for databases and databases for machine learning. Um, and so we have people that are building a lot of these, the hot thing now is these vector databases, which I'll we'll discuss next class, but uh, we're having them talk about their systems, how to like support LLM-like stuff inside of database systems. And then we'll have people talk about how they're using machine learning to optimize database systems, right? sort of like you know, using to make the system actually run faster. So again, this is optional. Everything will be on Zoom at, uh, on Mondays at 4.30, and then uh, then we'll post it on YouTube afterwards. Again, in this one, you don't have to be a senior student either. You, you can join it if you're interested. You can see the list here, the full, the full uh, schedule. All right, so that's it for the logistics class. Uh, I got to figure out what we're going to do about, about, about Mushu. He's not getting it now anytime soon. That's the problem. Uh, but it's okay. All right, so next class on Monday, we'll have the in-class lecture, uh, and then we'll begin right out of the gate, not talking any logistics for the course, we'll just immediately talk about the relational model and, and, and databases, okay? All right, guys, see you next week.